Hey, everyone. Welcome to the fifth episode of Schools. Hello. Welcome. Brian is back, <laughs> even though many of you assumed that he would have been replaced by now. Including me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, it's all good. I, I get it. I get it. On today's episode, I am going to be doing what does breaking the seal mean? Nice. Why do people say I broke the seal? I've won I've wondered that a lot. Me too. And you are, Oh, Mandela effect. You're doing Oh, the Mandela effect. Yeah. Oh, trippy. The Mandela effect. Uh-huh. Are you going to tell me why it's called the Mandela effect? Uh possibly. Okay. All right. You'll I look have to forward wait and to see. it. Unless right. you want me to go first. Oh, that would be weird. Yeah, we don't yeah. want to do that. <laughs> that, would, <laughs> that would totally mess me up. It would mess me up bad. So before we begin. Yeah. In honor of Super Bowl Sunday. Because today is today. Super Bowl Sunday. I wanted to do something kind of odd. And here's here's why. You, we have a lot of girls running around in this house who deem themselves as Swifties. Yes. And you yourself has maintained on occasion, more than on occasion, quite frequently, that you are a Swifty by osmosis. Yes, that is correct. You would think that I would do like Super Bowl or football trivia. Yeah. Well, why would I when Taylor Swift has taken over the NFL? Okay. Even as an NFL fan, I'm going to say that. Right. So we're going to do a combo of the two. We're going to do a dad Taylor Swift trivia. Oh, God. Mixed. <laughs> mixed with football trivia. Oh. It's a little bit of both. This is going to be rough. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's see how much of a I'll Swifty. Do it. I'll do my best. You are. Okay. No cheating. No, I, I, I'm not going to cheat. Okay. <laughs> Question number one. I'm ready. What is Taylor Swift's favorite number? Uh, I think I actually know this. It's a uh, 20. Is it 20? 22? Oh, wait, wait. Is it not? Is it 1989? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um, one, of, one of the girls told me one time that there's like a numerology thing about it. And I, I can't remember. It's 13. 13. Okay. Wah, wah. <clears throat> All right. One Go, one wrong. Going directly into the next. I, this one is a combo Taylor Swift and football question, which you're not. There's no way you're going to know this just based on your. Thanks. Based on your thanks last for answer. Asking Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I have faith. Is so I'm this making. one's designed to make me look stupid is what the way how I'm hearing. That. No, no. Babe. OK. What is Travis Kelsey's jersey number? <laughs> 13. <laughs> 1989. I don't know. Hey, wait, you think, <laughs> you think Jersey numbers are four numbers? Is it 19? Is it 89? Close. It's 87. Okay. I would say I got it right then. <laughs> okay. Anything within five on numbers is always okay. accurate. Got it. Got it. What type of farm did Taylor Swift grow up on? Christmas tree farm. <gasps> Whatever. That's one. I didn't know that was real, but. I remember the song Christmas Tree Farm. So, yep. Okay. How many points is a touchdown worth? Six. Yes. Man, that was a that was an easy one. Okay, so I'm fifty percent. Okay. Um, what was the name of Taylor Swift's latest album that has been released? Because I know she just announced like the one. remakes or whatever. Bonus points? No. Bonus points if you know the name of the album coming out in April. Oh, yeah. I don't know that. Um, I don't. I don't remember. Midnight's. Midnight's. Is it like, are you like, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I rem I know that's the name of an album. <laughs> I just forgot that it was the, late, the most recent one. Name one. Honestly, it seems like that she releases one every week or two. Sure. I wasn't, so, I was not, not gonna, going to, I don't really understand. Taylor's, I was not going to accept a Taylor's version okay, answer. Always, Although I would have been impressed feel if like, you would have known. I feel like the girls are always like, oh, this is going to release today. Every week they say that. And it's the same thing. Yeah. And I don't understand, but they do. 
Name one member of the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, um, how about uh, Zeke? You would have been correct in 2022. Oh, okay. Um, Jeez. <laughs> My mind's totally blank. I have no idea. Um, yes, you do. Come on. Quarterback. I don't know. <laughs> Dak Prescott. Okay. Does that ring a bell? Now? Oh, I know is I know all their names. I just if you ask me to do it on the top of my head, off the top of my head, I'm not gonna. This is real painful. Finish this line. Okay. And if this makes you feel any better, I have to sing. Okay. All right. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. At tea time, everybody agrees. I'll stare directly at the sun, but never in the mirror. Something about an anti-hero. <laughs> it must be exhausting, always rooting for the rooting anti-hero. Rooting for the anti-hero. Yeah. <laughs> right, like, I, remember, I know the song. It's like 10% correct. Yeah, I knew anti-hero was the last words. <laughs> you did a nice job singing, though. I think it might be a little better than her, maybe. No. Oh, God. No. Okay. Name two songs off the Reputation album. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. Uh, Christmas Tree Farm? <laughs> no. no. Uh, there's a song about a sweater, Cardigan, maybe? No, that's not, that's not off that album. Okay. Um, Bejeweled? No, that's off Midnight's. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that you know that song, though. Uh, we always say it to the kids anytime they do anything. Oh, uh... Yeah, get it off my desk. Or no, no, no. That's uh, karma. No, I know what you're talking about. This is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> That's one. Okay. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> Getaway car. Okay. We have another one. King of my heart. Okay. I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. Fine. What does the penalty roughing the passer mean? It means you're, it means you like tackle the quarterback. Yes, it does. Unnecessarily. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what this means. <laughs> okay. okay, your last question. All right. Finish this line, which requires me to sing again. I don't want to touch you. I don't want to be just another ex-love. You don't want to see. I don't want to miss you. Oh, end game. Is that right? Yeah, but that's not the next line. Oh, but big, that's actually big really reputation, good. Big reputation. Like the line was like the other girls do. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't have got that, but I know it ends with end game. Yeah. All right. That was fun. Actually, it really wasn't. <laughs> okay. Thanks for asking. You're. Saying... It's not like we just edited it out. edited it out that <laughs> you forgot that I had another topic. <laughs> So, well, I didn't know. It's really nice about you. Re really nice for you to ask. You're welcome. Yeah, I have a problem that I'd like to talk about. Oh, okay. With and me? No, no. It's It has to do... So I was thinking about how dumb Stanley Cups are. And <laughs> I just uh -huh. hate the fact that they're expensive and like a fad and... Mm -hmm. And I just don't like them at all. Okay. For many reasons. Okay. Gotcha. So, but then I was like, okay, you know, I was, I was like, kids, teenagers are so stupid. This is like, they're not, they're, I'm, and I mean, like, when I say stupid, I mean, like, let's latch on to this fad. Sure. And then we'll forget about it next week. And then we we'll did it when we were fad. teenagers too. That's, and that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to be fair. Okay. So I went back and I was like, in my mind, I'm thinking of different, different fad drinkwares. Oh, and there's okay. there's more than, there's more than I you know as I was racking my brain there's quite a few were they as expensive? I get I get into that a little bit. Okay, so this is like think about this as like a mini fact finding. Okay, I only looked up one thing. Okay, the first thing I had to look up is I wanted to see when the first wine glasses were invented. Like where there's oh. different wine glasses for that was in Venice in the 1400s. Because people find it so annoying when I when they say I'd like wine and i say you're having red or white and i have to hand them a particular glass yeah this whole rant is about like there's cupboards full of glassware and drinkware in, in everyone's house mm -hmm. and just 
it just seems stupid. You just need one cup. It's just, you just need a cup. I mean, mm. so fast forward to the 1980s, you've got, do you remember those like seasonal glasses that have like etched like Christmas themes yes. and things like that? And then, and then kids drink wear where, where they were those kind of like soft plastic cups. They're not throwaway. Right. They're not the solo cups, but they're probably they filled up like Care BPA. Bear. That, yeah, I don't even know what the B extra BPA included for <laughs> free. I remember the first time the BPA went down my throat. It was like everything that tingling, tasted better. That tingling warm sensation. Mm -hmm. So the 1990s, you had these, the giant fishbowl wine glasses come around with like the stem, a stem that's basically a toothpick. So they break easy. Uh -huh. I call them breakaway glasses. Mm, okay. So the eighties one was when it was like stores said, Oh, I can start selling people different sets of glasses now you know with the seasonal ones and and then you have the consumerism then man. then the stores in the 90s they were like holy shit people are gonna buy giant fish bowls and you know just silly stuff like that um so yeah let's start making tons of different glasses for alcohol and so the 2000s you've got moscow mule cups and now these things are just littered across bars and restaurants right now still nobody, never had one but yeah nobody really drinks them anymore it was like a big fad in the early 2000s well, they're gold why wouldn't you want to drink out of them i've never seen anyone drink out of it in the last 10 years mm -hmm. but i see them all the time like hanging on bars and yeah and in restaurants and they i think some restaurants are putting flowers in them there's like nobody's using those things okay and then you've got and that's where that's where like store said, wow, people will literally buy anything. I can't believe that they're going to buy it for one particular drink that everyone in America is going to buy this one Masco mule, right? Like, copper cup. Right. So then in 2010, you've got the hydro flasks. Um, and that was like the first time I think that companies realized they could sell stuff that's glasses or water stuff. You can drink water out of for like $40 a piece. Right. They're like, holy shit, people are buying this stuff. Right. Just because it's like popular with the teens. And then, of course, you got these Stanley Cups. They're terrible. The, I guess my point is, it's just like it, the more we keep buying this shit, the more they're going to invent it. That's my rant. It's just like I see this. I see our cupboards f like there's st these Stanley Cups don't even fit in cupboards. They don't fit in dishwashers. They're, they don't. They might as well be like yardsticks. Why do you need a 40 ounce thing? It, it's ridiculous. Of water. And so I've, we have cupboards and cupboards of these metal cups and mm -hmm. all this bullshit mm -hmm. that I feel like I have to wash. Then they started making I'm not me, angry about it though. Then they started making me buy them with my kids' artwork on them. Oh yeah, that's right. So, see, you understand. I do. Wait, so do we owe our kids an apology because we did the same thing when we were kids or are we throwing them away? I'm wait, I'm confused. Which um, which way are we going here? I, I don't want to apologize for anything. So <laughs> okay. we just won't mention the other stuff. And I don't know if it's it's probably too soon to throw the Stanley Cups away because okay. Christmas was pretty recent. Okay. All right. I bet soon. in a year they'll never notice them. Right. So or they'll or they'll be a new fad. That's all I got. They get us every time. Okay. Breaking the seal. That's all right, what my breaking episode the seal. is about in case all anyone right. forgot. So what does he mean? Why do people say you broke the seal? Is there an actual seal? No. So everyone's been there. You've been there. Is uh, well, actually, you tell me. Is this just a girl thing or a guy thing? Because I know that I've been in a bar, and I've tried to hold off on going to the bathroom as long as I can because the second I do, I feel like I'm back in there five minutes later for the next thirty minutes. Like it's it's yeah, nonstop. I definitely remember, like back in the day, that being a thing. Okay, so it's not just a girl thing. No, no, no. It's okay. it's it, and it seemed like it was more real than just my imagination. Right. Well, it's very real. That's what it I is figured. not your imagination, and it and it literally there's not actually a seal, but um, there's literally something in you in your human anatomy. It should make sense why it's not just a girl thing. It's it's an everybody thing. Okay. So to understand why this happens, you first have to understand urine output in your body. Okay. And I find it when I was doing this preparing for this episode today i thought it was really funny that last week you did toilet paper i know it's like it's like we just can't get away from like the the second grade humor or whatever <laughs> and this week i'm talking about the use for toilet paper so anyway i just thought that was funny we should have done them in the same episode but yeah if i could turn back time oh wow i'm just gonna try and see how many more times in this episode i can sing i like it okay so you have to understand uh, your hypothalamus and the hormone ADH. 
So your hypothalamus is, is at the base of your brain and it produces ADH, which is anti-diuretic hormone. Okay. And it, what that does is it helps regulate the amount of water in your body. Cool. So if okay. you have too much water, just meaning you're well hydrated, it produces less ADH. Okay. And if you have too little water, it produces more ADH. These sensors, they talk to your brain and tell the pituitary gland when to release more ADH into your bloodstream. So when you have enough water in your system, your body, your bladder fills up and it releases it through your kidneys. That's during normal situations when you're just drinking water. So how does alcohol like inhibit that affect, affect that piece? So drinking alcohol, it literally stops the body from producing this ADH. So when you suppress ADH in your body, alcohol, it doesn't tell the kidneys to uh, regulate the amount of water and okay. waste that's going out. So every single thing you put into your body, assuming it's, you're putting alcohol in, just goes straight through your, out through your bladder. Like there's no processing. Oh, okay. ADH is what like helps process that kind of stuff. I see. So what goes in comes, goes straight out. There's. So that's why you have to go to the bathroom so much. That's why you have to go to the bathroom so much. It's really crazy. Drinking more, even like, so even if you try to like, um, counteract this by putting more water into your system, you're just putting, it's, you still have alcohol in your system. It's going to stop. I gotcha. But still drink water, obviously, right. when you're doing And it's the same exact thing with caffeine. Have you ever noticed when you drink a lot of caffeine, you have, have to go to caffeine? Totally. Caffeine is also a diuretic. It stops the production. Like, like drinking a cup of coffee is just, it's like you have to pee like immediately. I yeah. Like. Yeah. Well, those, so I don't, I don't really notice it with caffeine, uh, coffee so much, but those protein, those energy pouch things that we put in. They make me have to go to the bathroom like a lot. All of it. Any caffeine does for me. I totally notice it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's that's a diuretic too. So <laughs> that's cool. I never knew the science behind that. Well, now you do. Anti diuretic hormone. And knowing is half the battle. So it doesn't actually help to hold it. You know what I mean? Because the alcohol is the trigger, right? You just fill it up again, even yeah, faster. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Technically, what you should do is you should just go to the bathroom the second you have to go, and then you actually would probably go less because it's not filling up as fast. I see. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. That's really cool. Um, I did. I did. So I was like, so is it all alcohol that does that? Um. So what they suggested was they said that try to choose drinks with a lower total alcohol content, such as wine, instead of cocktails with hard liquor, liquor and sugary drinks make it like even worse. The bu bubbles and sugar and, and drinks containing carbonation sugar and cranberry juice, which can also irritate the bladder and increase the urge to pee. So what I'm saying is go to the bathroom the second you have to go. Drink like a really dry Pinot or Sauvignon Blanc, and you should be fine. And water. All right. Okay. So, that, and you're not breaking a seal, but it's just really good to know. The yeah, science that behind is good it. to know. All right, babe. That was mine. That was, mine was really, really short today. Yeah, that was very interesting. I appreciate that. I'd like to apologize again for the Taylor Swift trivia that I made you. That do was earlier. horrible. I'm so sorry. We were, just cut it out. <laughs> we, you've got to cut that out. Okay, so the train. For the, um, what was that? The train from breaking the seal to the Mandela effect. So when I, I figured breaking the seal wasn't just a mind thing. Cause it just, you can just tell, but I still, it still made me think, okay, is sure. that something in your mind? Mind over matter. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking about like the minds funky. We like still don't understand everything about our minds, you know? And I'm not talking about just me. Like I'm pretty sure smart people still are learning things about that every day. And so, yeah. And then I remember hearing about the Mandela effect one time and I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to dig more into that. Okay. So I'm excited. That's, that's why we're here now I'm at this point in time. You could have had no train to board with this one and I still would have been excited because the Mandela effect is fascinating to me. All right. 
Yeah, I got some examples, and we're going to talk about what was that one movie? Causes. What was that one movie where they they took a pill? Like they say, we only use like I don't remember what the number is. Let's say ten percent of our brain, and the movie where they they took the pill and they were able to use like more percentages of the brain. I think there was two movies. You're talking about the Matrix. No, no, that's not what that movie's about. Well, you said a movie with a pill. It's with um. Who's who's the one um, raccoon from uh... the raccoon? <laughs> oh boy! Uh, if you take hangover, out the hangover, if you the take guy out from the hangover, if you take out the Taylor Swift stuff <laughs> trivia, I'll let you take that out because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. He plays the guy from the Hangover in Guardians of the Galaxy. I can't remember his name. Okay, I know the I know the raccoon that you're talking about now in Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. I got it. <laughs> You're talking about the voice? Yes. What, what's, what's his name? It doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, he was in the movie. And then there was also um, Black Widow, whose name, for whatever reason, also did a, another movie where she started using more percentages of her brain and eventually just became a computer. Or like she like more. I don't think I saw either. Oh, of gosh. I think there is a movie called Mandela Effect, though. No, this isn't really about that. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry. So. Girl. There's a lady, Fiona Broom, and she's an author and paranormal re- person. She started a website about the Mandela effect, and that's that's where it was coined in 2009. 2009? Yeah, that's where the Mandela effect. Wow, I would have thought wore, it was. Like it was coined then, you know, like Understood. the whole Mandela effect. So it started when she went to a conference and began talking to other conference goers about the tragedy of the previous South African President Nelson Mandela and his death in a South African prison in the 1980s. Okay. Okay. So she's at this conference, and I don't know what the conference was, so I obviously didn't research very well. But sure, it was some. It was just a conference. Got okay. it. However, with further research, she learned that the pre- President Mandela did not die in the 80s. Instead, he passed away in his own home in 2013, not in a prison. Broom talked with other people about her faulty memories and she learned that she was not alone. So she started, she was like, just baffled by this. Like, how did I think this? She starts talking to other people. They also have that memory. So weird, right? It's not just her. It's not, you know, there's lots of people. This is just like my memory that they put Pluto back in as a planet, but you insist that it's No, didn't see, I'll go into that. There's certain things that are just called false memories. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're not really necessarily the okay. Mandela effect. And my opinion is the Pluto thing might just be a false memory. Sorry, mm. babe. Okay. Okay. Um. So she, when she was talking to these people, she said she remembered seeing news coverage of Mandela's death. It was like pretty detailed, right? News coverage, a speech by her widow. She remembered, or a speech by his widow. Sorry, oh, Nelson okay, Mandela's I was like, widow. I think you would not. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, so yeah, she just couldn't believe like, how, how are all these people not knowing or like knowing this wrong? And so her website kind of dug into the phenomena of this, right? Okay. That's where the term came from. So now I'm going to give you some examples of the Mandela effect. Okay. So in Star Wars episode five. Oh God. Even, even people that don't watch Star Wars. What was it? What what was the name of it? Star Wars Episode Five. That's what it's called. Episode no, Five. No, it's the Emperor's Empire Strikes Thank Back. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Empire Strikes Back. Okay. So it's the second one released, fifth movie. Got it. Okay. <laughs> um, you've heard the term Luke, I am your father. Yeah. Luke, I am your father. Mm-hmm. It was actually not that. the The actual phrase in the movie is "No, I am your father." Right? <laughs> that one, I was wrong on that too. And I, that was, you know, that's, I like Star Wars and I remember it wrong. Right. Let's, let's go to a Disney movie now. Okay. So Snow White, I don't remember. What's the villain's name? It's this evil stepmother. I don't know what the villain's no, name it's is. No, it's like a witch, like the mirror, mirror on the, or wait. I thought it was an evil stepmother. Is that? No, the seven dwarfs and their. But her stepmother, got a mirror. her stepmother is the one talking into the mirror. What okay, was the name it might of be it? a yeah, maybe it was a stepmother. I don't okay, know. so 
do you remember it being what actually let's do this okay. what do you remember that the the mirror saying mirror mirror on the wall who's the fairest of them all okay what do i remember the mirror saying no 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 you got it that's what that's what i was asking okay i was like what is that famous phrase okay that's what i think too the actual words okay. are magic mirror on the wall no it's not okay look it up <laughs> famous children's book with the bears do you remember what it was called goldilocks okay mm -hmm. now oh, close it's it's there's a multiple series and there's it's a bear family and they live Beringston, in a bear bearing Beringston bears yeah the Berenstain bears. bears so the thing is it's called Berenstain bears no yeah the la it's b-e-r-e-n-s-t-a-i-n not steen and i thought it was Berenstain bears too like sting steen i thought yeah. it was steen yeah i don't know forrest gump jenny do you remember the chocolate quote um laughs like a box of chocolates you never know what you're gonna get all right so that is what they accent that is what i thought as well okay it's actually my mother always said life was like a box of chocolates you never know what you're going to get oh well maybe that was before it okay monopoly man give me some characteristics of the monopoly oh what do you mean oh, oh like what he looks like yeah He's got a cane. He's got a top hat, a mustache. Okay. That's all I got. Maybe bald. I don't know. Okay. Any other accessories that you can think of? Um, he's wearing black pants and sharp black shoes. Okay, good. You actually got it right. A lot of people believe that he has a monocle on as well. What's a monocle? It's like the one eyeglass. Thing. It's the one. Oh. It's like half of an eye. No. If you would have said, does he have, first of all, you would have had to have explained what a monocle yeah. was. Like Mr. Peanut has a monocle. I understand. For sure, Mr. Peanut has one. Oh, is that what, Planters am I confusing Peanut, yeah. the two? Yeah. No, you're not. But a lot of people think that the hmm. Monopoly man has a monocle. There's no, there's no official printed pictures of him that have a monocle. Weird, right? Planters Peanut. This okay. one was real strange to me. Okay there's a movie that a bunch of people believe existed that doesn't that doesn't actually exist it's oh. called shazam it is that does exist okay tell I've me about it. it tell me about it it's a superhero movie okay where this guy he how does he get his superpowers i don't know he's like a boy and then he shazams into an adult who can has superpowers I don't okay know. and who's the who's some of, do you remember any of the actors in it no, but I could, if you like pointed to it on the internet, I could say that was the actor. Okay. And that, can I, can I say one more thing? Yeah, absolutely. I want you to tell me as much as you know about this movie. There's a sequel to it too. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that I started. And it's called Shazam. Yeah. The original movie. That I started watching on the way from, when we were coming back from LA. Okay. And you don't remember. Oh, so it's recent. Yes. And are you sure that there's, you don't remember any of the, the actors or anything? Do you want me to look it up? No, 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 no. It's not not required. Actually, you won't find anything because it's not a movie. <laughs> You'll find a lot of people saying that saying that it actually is a movie about and that, superheroes. That there's a conspiracy that they got rid of it. It's not about it. So the movie that a lot of people believe there was in existence. They have to say Shazam, and then they turn into, and then there's like six of them, and they have to say the word Shazam, and okay. they turn into their so adult superheroes. The movie that a lot of people remember, Shazam, is Sinbad, is in it. Remember no. Sinbad? No, Sinbad. Well, and uh... he was he was a genie in it, and he had like gold. He had like gold face paint on, and he had like a gold turban. Okay. No. That's I remember this movie, and he because I remember like in the previews, like I didn't watch it, but I remember in the previews he was like sitting like a genie, and he's like. Sinbad. No, I don't remember that. Okay. And that was, and people believe it was from the 1990s. There's no movie that exists like that. <laughs> There's a movie in 1996 called Kazam, but it was a basketball star. It was a uh, Shaq, not Sinbad. Got it. And it, so, I mean, so are there any images of Sinbad? Sinbad no, but in a if you go on Reddit, there's some real crazy conspiracy shit. Like, why are you not telling me it? I mean, We'll leave it for, you know, All right. it's just, I'm just giving examples. Fine. Like Someone, people, well, well, people are like diehard. Like there's even people that are, that say like, yeah, it was, and they don't give reasons on why it would be wiped from, 
the records, right? But there's I saw one post where it's like, look at this, look at this movie website I found from China, and it like references it references Shazam, and it's got all the actors. It's it was probably fake, I'm guessing. But like, like who's gonna? Why would they pick that movie to to get rid of and strike from the records? But it's strange because there's there's a lot of people that remember this movie. All right, ready for the next one? Yeah. Fruit of the Loom. Can you tell me anything about the logo for Fruit of the Loom? It's got like fruit grapes on it and like different kinds of fruit on it. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Red, I think they're purple. Would grapes? you say it was like a cornucopia of fruit? Yeah. Okay, but it's not. So there are grapes, leaves, and berries, and that's it. Oh. So, I mean, you got grapes, but there's okay. not like apples. There's not. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. There's a red apple and there's grapes and leaves, but there's no other like no other um, fruits and things like that. Yeah. All right. A couple more. Okay. Are you getting bored? I can skip. No. Okay. Mickey Mouse. Yeah. He does not have suspenders. Now, does that throw no, you off? No, he does. He, in fact, he doesn't wear a shirt. He only wears suspenders and pants. He does not have suspenders. <laughs> period. Then what is he wearing? Yeah. So what's his outfit? Nothing's holding up Mickey's red shorts. No. That's that's what it is. Huh. Okay. Well, the re- I was trying to picture what I thought the suspenders looked like, and I'm just coming up with black. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Okay. It's real weird, right? Yeah. So what about the phrase, when you look in your rear view, or in, in your side mirror in your car, what is it? Do you remember what that says? Objects in mirror may appear closer than they actually are yes close but i'm glad you use the word may because that's not what's on there it's it's objects in mirror are closer than they appear and the the common misconception is that it's objects in mirror may be closer than they appear oh no it definitely at one point said may i i'm just telling you what the internet it said may too um, I don't know what I thought. On, it's it's weird because after, and I kind of go into this, but after you read these. You know, can we kind of consider that this is like my quiz for the day and maybe I could be forgiven for my Taylor Swift quiz earlier? Yeah. Okay. But there's no wrong answers for the ones I'm asking. You. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's so fair. it's similar, but okay. all right. So it's hard. One thing I notice is after you read these, it's impossible for me to it's harder for me to go back and be like, what did I actually think it was? Because you, they're both in your mind. So on this one, like on some of them, I, I totally remember thinking one thing and it's actually another, Mm -hmm. but like this one, I don't know if I thought it was may or I could have gone either way. Uh, Nope. I definitely a hundred percent would have stuck with may. All right. Weirdest one. Okay. Challenger explosion. Uh, 1987. That's all I got. What about it? There, remember there was a teacher on board. I think a lot of people know what it is, but the Challenger is a spacecraft and it, and it launched in like 73 seconds later. It, yeah. it unfortunately blew up. It was very sad. What was the significance of the Challenger? Where were they going? I don't remember. I don't know what the mission was either. We were really little we, in our defense. We were very little. Yeah. But um, it was very, I remember very sad but and we were, the whole nation was we were all really watching upset it. And, and mourning. And it was... That's what that's what's interesting. I remember being in my kindergarten class mm-hmm. watching the space shuttle launch on a TV, which is very rare because we weren't. No. I remember specifically, I remember the classroom I was in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. I remember watching the TV in that classroom. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember my second grade classroom. And that's different than my kindergarten classroom. And I remember watching the TV in my kindergarten. So it's mind boggling to me. So the conspiracy is that people thought it happened. It's not a conspiracy. It's like. It's the Mandela effect. Sorry. A lot of people believe that the Challenger explosion happened before 1986, a couple of years prior. Oh, okay. I did not think that. All right. So I got, now you're wondering like, why does this happen? Yeah. So I'm going to go into that now okay. at this point. I'm done with the examples at this point. Okay. All right. I found, I copied a lot of stuff out of this, this lady's article. Okay. So it. I just want to just say her name. Again. And. And just thank make you. This is a different lady than the first one. Oh. So the first one was the website why the Mandela effect name came about. This is a lady that's trying to explain it. Okay. Okay. She's a Harvard graduate. Uh, she has her degree in science and psychology, and her name is Mia Bell Frothingham. Okay. okay. So thanks, we'll, Mia. We'll put a link to the article 
but you'll notice if you ever did read the link that I copied some stuff straight from it. Got it. Is that, does that count as copyright if I say that it, I'm copying it? I don't, hopefully not. I don't know. Um, so we've all, in from our article, it says that 76% of adults have experienced some some sort of this Mandela effect. So it, it happens to a lot of us. And and I don't I don't know where they got the 76 from because if you think about it, let me if you're gonna ask a hundred people, have you ever had anything like that happen? They're gonna be like some people are gonna say no because they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's hard to I mean they talk about a study in here, but it's different. But yeah. they threw that 76% number out. By the way, 76 is a great percent is a great percentage to throw out if you're ever talking about any scientific study or, or facts because 75 is just kind of bullshit uh -huh. it's too too round yeah it's, if you say 76 it makes it sound like it's way you or the half. scientists the really like calculated it out to get mm -hmm. that 76 percent and it's the majority it shows that there was a high number yeah no one's going to question you on 76. no one's going to question it they're yeah. going to be like oh 76 it seems like legit mm -hmm. you know and it because you can't go higher than that because if you said like 96 or 91 yeah it's too unbelievable people are like 96 no. percent come on guys that's yeah. way there's way more than than four percent that I'm are gonna disagreed. ask more questions yeah with 96 so, versus 70 so sometimes i gotta be honest with you i just say 76 percent. i actually use that for this i got it off the internet so i did not fake it but 76 percent is a good number to use if you ever want to fake a fact mia we're sure your numbers are very right. legit yeah like 76 percent of all people that listen to this podcast are going to be smarter at the end of it. <laughs> it's, it's fact. We, we interviewed 100 people. Yeah. And sure did. Okay. Three prominent features of the Mandela effect okay. from this, from this article. Recalling entire events that's happened. So we kind of gave some examples. Having warped memories where some aspects are partially or wholly true or false. Okay. Mm-hmm. Several unrelated people share m almost identical, contorted, or inaccurate memories. That's the weird one for me. It's like, how does how do multiple people right. have the same wrong memory or right. incorrect memory? So one reason that she gives could be priming. That's where you, where a, if a question's asked in a certain way, you may be more inclined to answer in a certain way. Okay. okay. So this is just an example of how, how things can be tweaked in your, in your brain. So for example, the phrase, did you take the green book from the shelf? It's a more evocative um, question than did you grab anything from the shelf? Yeah. So if okay. I, you know, if I were to say, Hey, a year ago, did you grab anything green from the shelf? I'm You're trying... like focused in on this one, that one color. I'm trying to think now if you led me in any of your questions that you asked me I probably earlier. Did. It wasn't on, it wasn't on purpose. So I'm not, right. I'm not organized enough. That would have been cool. False memories is another thing. So concept of false memories provides another potential explanation for the Mandela effect. False memories are defined as untrue, distorted, or outlandish recollections of events. Some false memories do contain elements of fact and do closely resemble the actual event in question. However, other false memories are entirely wrong, which is, is, which is pretty scary, right? Right. It's like, what am I, what do I think happened that didn't happen? Um, and then it goes, and then she talks a little bit about what I was already talking about, how our mind kind of captures memories at different times and, and things that we learn today can influence our past memories. You mm -hmm. know, it's kind of, it's kind of weird, right? I don't like to think about that. It makes me uncomfortable. Like, I like to think that my memory is what it is it was in stone that's what's happening. but someone could show you a picture of something and say this happened right you you would there is there are a lot of go ahead yeah actually. so you could you over the years you could actually think that that happened or like think you yes. remember it but you didn't actually remember yeah any there's of a it. lot of studies now and we always knew with like advertising and things like that yeah we always knew that it, you can be influenced by media and technology but uh -huh. there's a lot of studies that show that it even influences your past experience which is it's kind of crazy right? it is kind of crazy but but by the way when i say technology and media and stuff that's not there's a lot of articles about this and i don't talk about it very much here but that's not to say like i'm saying technology today is bad like books or an early form right we don't think of books as technology but books are technology right right and so when they were reading when people started reading 
they're automatically starting to get like these fictional ideas mixed with their actual memories. And so, you know, and now we... you could go to paintings, even paintings, like there's a lot of historical events that were painted in a, in a different way mm -hmm. that could have put the artist spin on it. Right. Who's to know where that blend is. And then now you involve AI with that. We're not going to know. It's going to be real. real crazy. An AI photo can go and put the mongoloid. What was it called again? Mongo <laughs> monocle <laughs> mongoloid. That's like, I don't know what that is. An AI can, a go, monocle. can go put the monocle. You know, like the guy, on, it's usually a, I, guy, a guy and he puts a little piece of glass and then he like has to like squint to keep it in his in his eye. I totally get what you're talking about now. I never knew that was called a monocle and neither did anyone else. Uh, a lot of people knew that it was a monocle. Okay, well, I'm dumb. I use that almost every week. I didn't say you were dumb. Mr. I don't know. What did, what questions did I didn't you know answer earlier? I didn't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm definitely not saying you're Anyway, right. AI can go and take Mr. Monopoly Man, whatever his name is. Does he have a name? Put the monocle in there and you could think that's real. Yeah. Um, what is his name? It was like, it's not money bags. It's like Penny, Uncle Penny bags, I think. Okay. Not Pennywise. That was actually, no, not Pennywise. It was actually part of the Mandela effect for, for the Monopoly Man, though. His his. Monopoly man is correct. And then there's something like Penny, but like money bags is like, people think that might be part of his name and it's really not. No. Okay. All right. Confabulation. So what we did, what did we do? Uh, priming. We did false memory confabulation. This is where you're not, where your brain is like literally you're remembering something completely different. It's a lot like false memory, but like mm -hmm. Alzheimer's patients, mm -hmm have confabulation. They're not trying to make anything up. They're not lying. They're not, they don't think they're lying. They're not trying to lie to you. They're not trying to convince you of anything. They're just saying things that are not correct. They're factually and in, in, historically inaccurate. Okay. But they believe them to be true. But they believe them to be true. So here's, here's where I had the problem. If it's false memories or leading words or media, like why are so, why would so many people have an idea about just a few different things, right? It's not like everybody right. can't remember if this chair is green. I mean, these are like historical things or, you know, the word, the ones where the word changes like Berenstain versus Berenstain, eh, whatever. Even like but, considering a lot of the examples you gave were before like the internet was even, That's what I'm talking even about. Even out. Right? Mm -hmm. Like the challenger, like what I... Besides other history teachers in my, my youth telling me about these things, like it's not like I read newspapers back then. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch a lot of TV on it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, what could have influenced me right. and all these other people on the challenger thing or the man, you know, the Nelson Mandela thing where it originated. It's just, there's so many. So here's the off the wall reasoning. Yes. Yeah. This is for people that, that. Don't and, want and really, the science bullshit. We just. And want... really the lady that I first, that started the Mandela the Mandela effect website. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are some of the things she believes. Like I went on her website and she's, and she talks about how like some scientists give basically think are basically saying, you know, we're too stupid to remember, remember things correctly, which I think there's some, <laughs> some reality there. Like, can I take three guesses? Yeah, you can. As to what the really nutty ones are. Yeah. I mean, go ahead. It could be, there's probably a million of these, but I only have like one example. Okay. Go ahead. One, alternate universe. Okay. Two, time travel. Okay. Three, I was going to say alternate universe again. Yeah, no, alternate universe is one of the, is one of the things that I read about. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you're right on. I'm so excited. So parallel universes or alternate universes. Yes. Okay. The, Mar the Marvel movies totally explain how this is possible, so... Yeah, right. Exactly. And <laughs> w what's messed up is what if that the reason why we were watching like the Marvel movies and then that's part of our memory now that like, oh, this is probably this is something. So there is a little bit of science that backs this theory up, but it's not provable or disprovable. So right. keep this in mind. Um, it actually originates for this theory it originates from quantum physics and the string theory. You already lost me. Which, yep. <laughs> and pertains to the concept that rather than experiencing one timeline of events, alternate universes or realities may be taking place and mixing within our timeline. Deja vu. Could be, yeah, like deja vu. I've had 
severe deja vu before. There you go. And that could be, you know, that's along the same lines. Like, it's not, it's not just like, didn't this happen? It's like, it has stopped me in my tracks before and been like an overwhelming. I've had that a couple like, times. Physical effect yep. on me. Like, I can't I... think of a recent example, but I, yeah, I can't but even... I know exactly what you're talking about. You were like, like, I can feel it's it. It's weird. Like, yeah. yeah. It's real weird. Yeah. It's like, whenever I feel like the need to ask somebody, that's because it's like striked me it's striking me really strong. Like I'll feel it every once in a while and right. I just ignore it. But okay. So the, that theoretical framework that I talked about with string theory and quantum quantum physics describes the universe in the very nature of reality in terms of s small strings that vibrate through different dimensions of so string theory. Okay. So based on string theory, one can say that our universe is only one of many possible infinite other universes and that some of those universes could somehow get intertwined with ours. Maybe like they could be slightly different than ours. And so our memories get warped. I just realized how the Loki episodes were generated. Right. I know. So Pluto Marvel, is a planet in Marvel, one of those. <laughs> yeah. Marvel actually uses quite a bit of this type of stuff in there. I mean, it makes because for Because you can do anything and everything you Rick want. Rick and Morty is a great, fantastic okay. show. Rick and Morty. Yeah, this they did. Someday in. you will force me to watch Rick and Morty. It's amazing. You're gonna love it. So they go into stuff like that all the time. But again, you can't prove no one can prove or disprove the, these theories because we can't just like go into another dimension and be like, oh yeah, there are other dimensions. You know, this is all like Someday. textbook theories. Yet, exactly. So who's to say that later on in life we don't figure out how to prove? But I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to give out some like textbook stuff and then some far out. I love it. Stuff. You I love the that. far out stuff. We should do more far out stuff. Yeah. And I don't know. Do you have any other thoughts about it? The car mirror thing may. Oh, appear. yeah. May appear versus. 100% may appear. Yeah. Yeah. Strange, right? Yeah. A lot of them are strange. It was good. I liked it. That's good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay. All right. And, and don't, don't, don't hold in your pee when you're going. That's, when you're drinking that's alcohol. right. Yeah. That's what we learned today. Good job, babe. Thanks. Per usual, I enjoyed it. Okay, good. I like Go yours team. too. See you next time. Bye, bye bye. Thank you all for listening. That's a wrap for today. Remember, this is not just a podcast, it's an interactive experience. If you've got a burning topic you want us to try and butcher next, drop it in the comments below. And if we pick your brainchild, you might just find yourself sitting in the hot seat as our honorary guest host. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode and follow us on all of our listening platforms. Until next time, stay curious.